Kelly Olenek stepping into the circle. And it's Wichita State controlling. Ahime Oripe handles. Oh, what Wichita a screen State. for Carl Carl Hall. Well, this one of the more physical teams in the tournament. Wichita State, 27 and 8. That large bid out of the Missouri Valley Conference. An 18 point winner here over Jamie Dixon's Panthers on Thursday night. They whooped the Panthers. Just whooped them. On set. Inside to Takeo Cotton. Oripe battles hard for it. And Gonzaga controls. For Wichita State, this is the first time in 50 years that they have taken on a number one ranked team in the country. Elias Harris, the German national, spinning baseline. Harris struggled Thursday night against Southern. Mm -hmm. Just two of ten from the field, and the Shockers get it back. And the key to the Shockers' offense is Malcolm Armstead. He's senior. First he went to junior college, then he went to Oregon. And he transferred, paid his own way last year to play this year for Wichita State. He is dynamic with the basketball, late in shot clock, off a of ball screen. Armstead has scored 25 plus points in each of the last two games. And 28 in the final of the Missouri Valley Conference Championship game. Shot clock under 10. This is Cotton. Here's Armstead against the Zach's best defender. Armstead can't hit. Cotton is there. And Cotton Dunn had about as big a hand in that Thursday win as anyone else for Wichita State. And look who he's guarding, Kevin Panga. Whistleblown, a traveling violation. Gonzaga turnover. To Kale Cotton. This is Malcolm Armstead's game. A little bit awkward. He said he was slow as a kid, so he had to develop a floater game. And to Kale Cotton, not your average two guard. Undersized power pack machine. Zag going a little two, a little one, two, two. And trap Cotton on the near side. He finds Baker. Armstead. Aaron pass. That's one that Armstead would like to have back. Wichita State gives it back. And the ultimate sign of respect when you're playing against Wichita State is, is to Kale Cotton Garden. He is, he is their lockdown defender. And as much as Kelly Olinick gets the press and is a National Player of the Year candidate, it's Kevin Pangos who takes and makes the big shots for the Zags as he did going back to Thursday night's late win over Southern. Well, that's oh the passing that makes them so tough. Harris never had a team lead. Pangos on a three. Contact underneath, loose ball foul, charge to Hart. And Doug, he just alluded to it, but that could be the matchup of the night. With Pangos defended by Takeo Cotton. We sat with Takeo yesterday and some of his teammates. He says he's been watching Pangos all year long, imagining what this moment could be like as they go toe to toe now on the national stage. Gonzaga had a shaky start here Thursday. Still looking for their first points. Baker driven it off the official's foot, gets it back. 15 to shoot. What a pass, Armstead to Aripe, backside, 4 nothing start. Gonzaga doubling essentially on ball screens, doing a very good job. Those big guys will be open. Ohime Aripe, the senior Nigerian national. Pangos' his pass deflected by Armstead, and here come the Shockers. Second Zags turnover. Armstead on a runner, and he'll shoot two. Well, here was the scene moments before the start of this game inside the Wichita State locker room. Um, should be an interesting night for him. Malcolm, you've got Bell. You can't lose Pango. Cannot lose him. Cannot lose him. It and says it all. And Marshall and company talking and focusing on Pangos you know, over the last 48 hours, trying to come up with the right defensive game plan against Gonzaga. Early substitution here. Play Anthony Early, the junior, their leading scorer off the bench. Average is better than 14 points per game. About 21 the other night and went over the Panthers. Armstead misses the second. So 5 nothing. 
run for the Shockers to start. With just over three minutes gone by. Demetric Williams has also come in for Greg Marshall. Williams, the senior, Las Vegas native. Here's Pangos, the sophomore phenom. Olenek, National Player of the Year candidate. Boy, he had the hot hand in the second half. And Gonzaga with its first points. And that's that is so much of it is set up by Kevin Pango. Ball had it stripped. Here comes Pangos. Williams back. And what a finish by Pangos as he heads to the free throw line. Kevin Kevin Pangos not only can play, what a competitor. Defensively. Starts the transition by getting the deflection. Mike Hart gives it back to him. Little Euro step off the glass and one. Woo. Kevin told us yesterday as he was going up in Toronto, his mother Patty was watching the tournament a couple of years back. Gonzaga started to make their perennial run. She became a Gonzaga fan, fell in love with the program. And here he is now, just a couple of years later. One of the stars for Mark Few, three-point play here, ties it at five. Armstead against Bell. Fifteen to shoot. There's Williams. Olenek defends him on a switch. Straight away three. Rebound fought for, taken by Hart. But the belief in the quickness of, Kel uh, in, of Kelly Olenek by Mark Few. They're switching so many of those screens now. Olenek going to the left hand. Hart to put back. Somehow misses the little chippy. And the officials say it will be Gonzaga basketball. Timeout. All right, Greg, thanks. So Butler and Marquette, the winner, advances to take on the winner between Illinois and Miami. And Butler, of course, just one of two teams that has beaten Gonzaga this year, and they were the last to do it nine weeks ago today. 63 days since this Gonzaga team has lost. And it was a little bit of a fluky loss. They had the, the game essentially won, couldn't inbound the ball. Paul Hall, the steal, no one back for the Cougars. Skying in for the deuce, and Wichita State back in front. Offensive foul. It's on Sam Dower. Well, you heard the incredible story of Carl Hall the other night. Here he is with the steal. Active hands in the ball screen. Gary Bell playing with the basketball too much. That's the same foul. Just sands dreadlocks. Shaved off his trademark locks before the tournament. Oh, Anthony Early with a three. When five straight points. When he hits three-point jump shots, it energizes him. Now, if he can score inside that three-point line, suddenly he becomes a completely different guard. He was 0 for 6 from beyond the arc Thursday night. Well, that's not going to stop him. Olenek. Offensive rebound hard. Payne goes for three. So Gonzaga again, ragged offensive start, similar to what we saw Thursday. They're 2 of 9. A lot of jump shots. Well, for people that haven't seen this Wichita State team, they play with a confidence and a swagger. There's Hall on the face up early, the rebound, swatted by Dowell. And Zaga controls with Hart as we come up on 14 minutes left before halftime. Great reaction from Sam Dowell. Only played seven minutes the other night. Early foul called on him. Doesn't sulk. Gets a big shot block and an extra possession for Gonzaga. Still plenty of time to shoot, 14 seconds. Mangos turns the corner. Olenek the offensive rebound. Three point game. Olenek with four. He's just so big. And the hair look, might look like one of the Hanson brothers <laughs> from uh, slap shot days. We found out yesterday, as we sat down with Kelly, he's a soccer guy. He was going for the Sergio Ramos look, the Spanish national, one of the top soccer players in the world. He said his roommates are 5'8 and 5'7, and they really got him into watching soccer. 
Here's Dowling. Early on his back. Early holding steady. Bell for the three. Wichita State unable to protect the defensive glass. Man, this is not Wichita State basketball. They are a dominant rebounding team in the Missouri Valley. This is Bell poked away. Six offensive rebounds so far for Gonzaga. Still plenty of time to shoot. 16 seconds. On the other hand, they will grind you. Watch for the ball screen and what's called a pocket pass back to the big fella. Pangos. Hart. Get it. Well, Kevin Pangos and some of his teammates telling us yesterday, sometimes they have to push Mike Hart to shoot. He's so unselfish with it. Five straight for the Zags, and we are all tied at 10. A look now at the Infinity Coaches Spotlight. There is Mark View. What, what a career it's been for the 50-year-old Oregon native. What he has done in Spokane is magnificent. He took over for Dan Munson. Munson left and went to Minnesota for seven years. And the program, after making the Elite Eight in 99, hasn't been back to the Elite Eight, but they've been determined every year, and they have been a dominant program in the WCC, essentially the Boise State football of college basketball. They've never been to the Elite Eight since Few took over. That 99 run that Doug pointed out, of course, under Dan Monson. Few was an assistant on that staff. Gonzaga has been to the Sweet 16 four times since Few took over. A win tonight. We'll get them there here in 2013. Pangos. Another offensive rebound. That's seven. Here's David Stockton. Back in his dad's old stomping grounds. His father, John, a Hall of Famer here with the Utah Jazz. In attendance again. Knocked out of bounds off of the Zags. And that the fifth Gonzaga turnover. There is Stockton in the seats here. Stoically looking on. So 12 minutes to play exactly first half. Gonzaga, longest active winning streak in the country, 15 straight, number one seed in the West. Battling Wichita State. The Shockers looking for their first ever trip to the Sweet 16. Spiro Ditas, Doug Gottlieb, Jamie Maggio, our entire crew here from Salt Lake City. Shockers have missed four straight shots. Fred Van Fleet, the freshman, has come in. This is Baker. Also Jake White, the man with the basketball. Traveling violation. Oh, all tied at 10, Gonzaga, Wichita State. Celebrate 75 years of March Madness by voting for your all-time players, teams, and moments of the NCAA tournament. Vote right now at NCAA.com slash March Madness. We check in with the third member of our team, Jamie Maggio. Jamie? Thank you, Spiro. When I spoke to Mark Few on Thursday at halftime, he could barely talk. He says he's been battling a pretty bad cough for about three weeks now. He was having a hard time communicating with his team in the huddle. So what did he do? He enlisted the help of someone who knows the area here in Salt Lake City pretty well. John Stockton sent him to a homeopathic doctor that he, you know, that he hasn't seen when he played for the Jazz. And Coach Few told me, I'm not so sure I believe in all the homeopathic stuff, but so far, it's working. So he did a little Mr. Miyagi on his neck, <laughs> and all of a sudden it opened up his vocal cords. He could talk again. Could be a broadcaster's best friend. Here's Olenek trying to go high-low with Elias Harris. Gonzaga getting the high percentage looks that they want. And Elias Harris to the line. You mentioned high-low. It's so hard to defend this because Kelly Olenek, you have to respect his ability to shoot. He's tall enough to look over, and Harris holding position. Old school classic basketball still works, especially when you got a big guy that can shoot it from three. Here is Harris, tournament MVP in the West Coast Conference tournament last week. The senior trying to go out with a bang. Had that exceptional freshman year. There was questions of whether or not he would come out. Made a decision that has paid huge dividends for him. Elected to come back. Kind of slumped a little bit as a sophomore. But uh, sitting down with him yesterday said it was the best decision, Doug, that he ever made. He's matured. A more well-rounded kid. And you don't often hear a 21, 22-year-old kid say, I was a bad listener. I thought I had all the answers. And here he is now three years later. Trying to get the Zags to the Sweet 16. Early. Oh, 
Offensive rebound, Armstead, and he buries the three. Malcolm Armstead, so much moxie in that young man. The senior Alabama native puts Wichita State back in front. Olenek, stripped by Armstead, and another Gonzaga turnover, their sixth. Rise and fire. Wichita State taking control again. One of the top defensive teams that so many casual fans haven't seen so far. Malcolm Armstead, that's called a dig. Goes in there, digs it out, then creating a shot. Not penetrate, get, paint touch. Jab step. Wichita State trying to get back to the Sweet 16. Of course, that memorable run in 2006, losing to the Cinderella team coached by Jim Laranega and George Mason. Made it all the way to Washington, D.C. They can get there with a win here in Salt Lake. That's a little thing, but both teams so well coached on underneath, out of bounds defense. Now, the Marks just say the lane. Pangos. Again, Gonzaga getting good looks. They just can't hit their four for 15 and one of seven from downtown. Pick and roll play. Hall, the recipient from Cotton. Mark Few calls for time. And so is to Kale Cotton. He has been salivating the thought of taking on the Zag superstar. Here is David Stockton. to handle the point. Backup who has become such an integral part of Mark Hughes' attack. We move on to 10 minutes to play before halftime, and the Zags, the number one seed in the West, down six. Red Van Fleet, the freshman, defending Stockton. 11 to shoot. Bell bottled up by Armstead. And Armstead now starting to play with that swagger. You see what he said? He said, I didn't say anything. He's he is he's he's super tough with that JYD mentality. Super tough, but super smart. He's not getting a little pushing match. He's saying I'm still here. Shot clock resets. JYD of course junkyard dog. Don said all kinds of attitude. Here's Olenek. IP for JYD. <laughs> Stockton inside to Olenek, towering over the defense. What a play. Mike Hart keeping it alive, and the shot clock resets. Harris <laughs> poked away cleanly by Cotton. Seven Gonzaga turnovers. There's only the hot hand picking up where he left off Thursday against the Panthers. Ask all the boys in the Missouri Valley. Don't let Lee Anthony early get it going early because he'll play above his level. Ten straight points for Wichita State. Olenek. The Shockers dictating the pace. And that was Kelly Olenek, three red shirt last year. Too many jump shots. Offensive foul by Mike Hart. Yeah, not scoring big numbers, but such an impact. A guy that his team calls the heart and soul of this Gonzaga team. Well, he just got a tip out for an extra possession. Now in position, easy call. Yeah, they encourage him. You know, he never shoots. After just 1.9 points a game, and people stopped guarding him. He hit a three early in the game. Remember the St. Mary's game when they won on the road, essentially clinching any hope. The WCC title off for uh, the Gale. They dared him to score, and he did. Hard an incredible story. A former walk-in. He was originally supposed to go to Oregon for academics. Decided to change his mind, won a spot. West Coast Conference Defensive Player of the Year. Baker thought about it, cutting a deep three, got it! 13 straight points. How good was that? Ron Baker, that is a pump fake, one dribble, create a shot for a teammate. At 
this end of the floor, Gonzaga has missed six of its last seven shots. Olenek, pick and roll, trying to cock it back and dunk. An incredible 0-6 run under Mark Turgeon. Some great wins in that stretch for his beating Seton Hall. They beat Tennessee in the second round. But what a win this would be. And you know, the other interesting, ironic part about this whole thing, they're trying to follow the standards set by what Mark Few has done at Gonzaga. Such a, a respect factor in talking to Greg Marshall and his players yesterday. There is Marshall, pacing the sidelines. A reminder to keep an eye on the top of your screen. Oregon has just defeated St. Louis. Unbelievable. Lopsided win as the four seed goes down. Armstead nearly lost it. Next up for Oregon will be Louisville. There is Baker. Six straight makes by the Shockers. They, they won by 20 the other night. Couldn't buy a bucket. 16 straight points. And right now, Gonzaga appears shell shots. You go back to Thursday, and they were in a close, hard fought game, had a lead at the half, and Greg Marshall, they were 1 of 14 from three, and Greg Marshall said, I like all those shots. I got them. I want you to make some of them. They didn't hardly make it in the second half, still won by 20. Now they're starting to make them. And Luke Gonzaga, missing shots they normally make. Zags a bit rattled. Now, the other interesting part is that you know, we touched on the fact that they haven't lost Doug since January 19th, nine weeks, and they haven't played many close games. So this uncharted territory, and of course, were challenged on Thursday night and responded well. Olenek took the game over in the second half, but this a different kind of challenge in Wichita State. Baker, on the final Rupe. And Rupe surrounded. They ran a nice little ISO, took out the weak side help, but Arupe keeps bringing the ball down. He's got to go up and finish quickly. And Zagat, no field goals in nearly seven minutes. They cough it up again. Early. Offensive foul. The Zags get it back. That's a terrible call. A terrible call. Early with a Euro step. The exact same play as Kevin Pango was early in the game. That's a bad call. Not close. Early steps around. That's not a charge. Bad call. So early with a tough break, he'll be replaced. 12-point lead for the Shockers. With 6.20 to play in his first half. And Zach, if you've just joined us, just four for 18 shooting. A 22% put, you see the run. Everything Olenek has had, it may be close in terms of distance to the rim, but everything has been challenged. He's, Arupe is a big boy, and they're coming to dig that basketball out. Second to the Missouri Valley Conference in blocks is Arupe. Under six to play before half time. When he likes to accept. Here comes Bell. Offensive rebound, Harris. Knocked out of bounds. Greg Marshall pleading with the officials, but Gonzaga retains 34 to shoot. The only thing keeping Gonzaga in this game is the offensive rebound. Go follow tournament scores, stats, and news live on the CBS Sports app. Get it free by texting SCORE to 42777 or by visiting cbsports.com slash mobile from your mobile or tablet. We're in Salt Lake City, Spiraditas, Doug Gottlieb, Jamie Maggio. Gonzaga, the number one seed in the West. Down 12 points. And finally, the drought ends with a Pangos triple. First bucket since the 1252 mark of the half. Pangos time. Kevin Pangos is not as widely regarded as Kelly Olenek is. But he is the key to this team. He has a ton of lower intestinal fortitude, let's say. A little handoff and Malcolm Armstead gets caught. You can't go under. Splash. The officials 
Walking over to the replay monitor to see whether a, an elbow from Orupe should be assessed a flagrant here. Now, if you watch Elise Harris, this is actually a moving screen. That wasn't called. Rupe boxing out. Mm. Oh, yeah. Boy, it's that a is right now, that one, to the face. Flagrant foul. Well, that different in that. Arupe is looking right at Olenek. Dangerous play. You can't see from that angle. But in the other angle, you could see that Arupe is 21 in the black jersey. You see, right after the release, goes to try to find him to box out. Yeah. Now you're trying to put your forearm in his chest, but if you just, I mean, that's it's an elbow that hits him right in the face. Pretty easy call. And a bit of a sell job by Kelly Olin. Doug, as we await the call here, how surprised are you at, at what we've seen so far? Very, very. Um, but when you stop and kind of take a breath and think of styles that have given Gonzaga difficulty, Butler muscled up to him. You go back last year, they lost to Ohio State in a great tournament game. This one seems pretty easy to me. I don't traditionally like the rule, but this is why the rule is in place. An elbow to the face. But you look back to last year and some of the struggles against the Big Ten, Big Ten a very physical conference. Gonzaga has a reputation as a very skilled offensive team, but a team that you can body, a team that you can out tough. Officials with a lengthy review here. They have ceased looking at the replay monitor. Now they're just talking it over with the score people. And now there's a difference between flagrant one and flagrant two. I believe this should be a one. I, I look, he absolutely elbowed him. It should be two free throws. Here's the difference in the two. Is it excessive, severe, or extreme contact with the opponent? I think no. I think it should be one. It is a flagrant one. Charge to Ahime Arupe, the seven foot senior from Nigeria. Think of how big that charge call was. It's a you're, great point. You're up 26 to 14, and I believe that was a botch call. Another look at the Arupe elbow a moment ago. Here's a Linick at the free throw line. And they react. Kevin Pangos hits a three. Now they get two free throws and they get the basketball. We're talking about the chance for an eight point trip possible. Arupe will sit. Lenick, a very good free throw shooter. This is the intent of the rule elbow above the shoulders. Good call. Mark Few has made a change trying to find it. The spark here. Drew Barham has come in. Barham the junior, Memphis native. It's a corner three. And a rebound by White. Wichita State, up as many as 13 points. White for the three, and he hits it. Jake White. Just two made threes before that shot. Yeah, but he's a face-up four. That's what he was brought into the game for. Create space for Armstead, create space for Carl Hall. White the sophomore, Minnesota native. And goes against Cotton, turns the corner. 11 to shoot. Harris. Harris, who has been awfully quiet offensively through the tournament so far, with five points. Van Fleet setting the table for Armstead. Yeah. Cotton can't keep it in, and Gonzaga gets it back. And Harris, another. I see your stretch four, and I match it. Harris. Bang. It's so hard to defend ball screens. Pick and roll action, if you will. When on the opposite side of the floor, you have Elise Harris, who's stretching the floor, and you have to respect him out to 21 feet. Gary Bell defended by Van Fleet. And you saw Harris screaming for it. Dower couldn't find him. Shot clock at 13 seconds. Pango's time. Kevin Pangos, the orchestrator, sophomore player. 
Gower. Harris. Drawing contact. Gonzaga, number one in the West. Trying to get back to the Sweet 16. But they have their hands full against this Wichita State program that has been so determined. 18-point winner over Pitt Thursday. And throwing the first uppercut on this one here. Harris, the senior, hits two. And Wichita State's lead down to five. Told you about the strong contingent of fans that have made the trip here from Spokane, all standing behind the Gonzaga bench. It's an 11 3 run for the Bulldogs. This is Fred Van Fleet, only a freshman, scraps up with a three. Offensive rebound, Baker, and he sticks it back. Baker, the red shirt freshman from Scott City, Kansas, about a four hour drive from Wichita. Told us about his hometown yesterday, two stoplights, population 2,800. With that young man on the biggest stage today, ah! Harris, gorgeous finish. Nine points for Harris. Wichita State's got to figure out that pick and roll game. Their rotations are all screwed up because of the skill of the Zags. Van Fleet, get it! Three pointer. It's an eight point Shockers lead. How about Van Fleet? Misses one, not scared, takes another one. Oh, Lennox swallowed up by the defense, and he is fouled. Olenek to the free throw line with 2.17 left in the half. And coming up, AT&T at the half will get you to our studios, caught up on all the latest tournament news, highlights, and updates. All coming up on AT&T at the half. And Kelly Olenek, one of 27 players over the last decade that have redshirted at Gonzaga. And he did it really because he wasn't going to get the minutes with Robert Sacre there last year. And the process by which the Zag staff had him work through was, we need you down that low block. He came in as a perimeter jump shooter, wanted to be a face-up four man. His size and his dexterity make millions and millions of dollars if you can score in that paint area. Boy, has he improved. And just imagine how deep this Gonzaga team was last year. For them to redshirt on Linux because they simply had too many bigs. And here he is a year later, a candidate for National Player of the Year. And they still have Karnowski, we haven't seen, who would start for anybody in their league and most teams in the Pac-12. We've only seen Sam Dow a little bit, who's a definite starter in most leagues in the country. Right off the screen. That's a shot that the Zags are getting here. What a play by Baker to keep it in. Shot clock did not reset. Ben Flick. Textbook head fake, but too strong, cleared by Hart. Come out firing, huh? There goes Kent on the corner. CJ LaFeel has come in. Wearing zero and an offensive foul on Olinick. Olinick and Pangos, really tough cover on the handoff, re screen, but he just can't move. And he keeps moving and rolling, sticking out that right leg. And defending that Gonzaga pick and roll. Such a tough thing for an opposing defense. Wichita State has done very well so far. So a decent job. Yeah. Offensive foul will give it back to the Bulldogs. Off the ball. That's just a dumb play. It's on the field. Yeah, the field is kind of, that's easy to call. Cost your team a possession. You come in. You get a possession on a moving screen, don't cost us a possession. We got to get a shot up every time down the floor. And Greg Marshall talked about this being a transition year going into the season. They lose their top 
four scores from last season. And here they are playing head up with Gonzaga. At one point, three starters were out to injuries. Oh. And it goes back to a nice find by Hart. And Wichita State's lead down to five. A little Eddie Sutton cowboy action. Greg Marshall wants a timeout. And, you know, Clee Anthony early got a charge and they had complete control of the game. That was also his second personal foul. Greg Marshall has not put him back in the game. I don't like that because it's hurt their momentum. Let's see if they can survive with the lead into halftime. Gonzaga trying to get to the Sweet 16 for the fifth time in the Mark Few era. Wichita State has been there three times. A win tonight. We'll get them there. Seven to shoot. Armstead. Rebound Harris with 40 seconds left in the half. Seven second difference, shot the game block. Baker defending Pangos. 15 to shoot. There's O'Leary. Guarded by the field. Hitting the fadeaway shot. Good luck guarding that. Ball screen, re-screen, get a touch into the paint. Throw it back out in the fadeaway. Wow. Shot clock off three seconds. Van Fleet. The tip up and in by Jake White. Miraculous play. Just flailed at it with his right hand. And Wichita State, as they will look at the replay, trying to salvage the final deuce. What a play from Jake White. Came in, hit a big three, and then gets a tip in. Wichita State really struggling with some foul trouble, and with Kelly Olynyk in the low post, well, that is a saver for momentum. They get a five-point lead going into the break. Wichita State led for nearly the entire first half, trailed by only two early. They absorbed that Gonzaga run. And that basket will stand. So a five-point lead for Wichita State. Also need to match the physicality of their opposition. Never an easy path to a college basketball championship, even for a one seed. Southern pushed here by Southern on Thursday, won by only six. And right now their hands full with Wichita State. Looks like Clee Anthony Early may have turned an anchor. Also Baker goes down hard. And they lost a bucket. They they had a they had a putback. To Kale Cotton got a layup, but because the foul was called. We see Clee Anthony early started the game off the bench, on the floor to start the second half. Remember he got two his second personal foul, what I thought was a block call, a charge call, and they lost momentum directly after that because of a seven point swing by Gonzaga. If you've just joined us. Wichita State up as many as 13 points in the first half. Taking on this Gonzaga team, one in the West. Gonzaga's team that has won 15 straight, longest active winning streak in the country. Early, partially deflected. Fourth shot, saved in, taken by a limp. Here's Pangos, the sophomore star. Baker trying to knock it loose, so it to the middle. The tip by Harris, no. Harris powers up, swatted. Early got him. Armstead. And the call here, it's against Early and Wichita State. A reminder to keep an eye on the top of your picture right now over on CBS. They come down the stretch, six and change left. Marquette up two over Butler. As Early has to sit his third personal. Greg Marshall said, hey, just because I ran a play for you doesn't mean you have to shoot the ball. And then he comes back, makes a good play defensively, and a silly foul in transition. I thought Greg Marshall put him on ice. You can fool your own player, kill his own momentum, if you will, by taking him out with two personal fouls. Runs a play for him to get him going in the second half. But you don't have to shoot it just because you're going to play for you. Olympic. Stumbling and a traveling violation. He's, he's struggled a little bit with being indecisive. He, if you ask scouts, NBA scouts, 
other college assistants, or even the Gonzaga staff. What's impressive about Kelly Olynyk is his patience in around the high, mid, and low post. But he's been a little bit indecisive, and part of it was he was pivoting with the wrong foot and never seemed really sure of what he wanted to do. You see the turnover numbers. Gonzaga careless with it against Southern Thursday. Body tied up. Baker changed his mind. That's a decision Baker wants back. Orupe, not a noted offensive player. And here comes Pendos. And a foul charge to Cotton. Actually, what happened was because Kelly Olinick thought it was a shot, he was in the process of boxing out. Watch the, everybody thinks it's a shot. Kelly Olinick's boxing out, and that's why Rupe can't catch the ball. Weird Martin is going to go into his bench here. Kyle Dranginis, the redshirt freshman Idaho native, who we did not see in the first half, will come in, wait and check in at the table. We mentioned the tough road as Pagos misses the first. Number one teams in the final AP poll over the last five years. Here is how they fared. Doug in the tournament, of course, Kentucky. We run all the way through, getting the hardware last year. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. Gonzaga, their first trip to the dance as a number one seed, first trip as a number one team in the AP poll. Whatever you think about rankings, generally that don't mean anything in the college landscape. The fact is that they are number one, and so they go from normally a hunter to the hunted. Mark Few told us yesterday this is the best Gonzaga team that he has had. But Armstead off of his foot as they crowd the senior guard, and he coughs it up. Nine Wichita turnovers. It's a smart play by Kevin Pangos as Kelly Olynyk kind of seals off Malcolm Armstead, who wants to get to that strong left hand. Kevin Pangos making winning plays. Harris thought about it. Still plenty of time to shoot. 15 seconds. Pangos a long two. Olynyk swallowed up by Hall, but a foul. And again, you know, very surprising how vulnerable the Shockers have been on their own defensive glass. Well, Third against Carl Hall. Tremendous rebound. If you look, Kelly Olenek, he gets inside position. He essentially boxed out, but I, I, come on now. I think I think what happens sometimes when you assume. You know what happens when you assume? That's what happened with John Higgins. He assumed that was a foul. Don't be the first to know the latest news on all your teams with Bleacher Report's Team Stream app. Stay one step ahead. Check our Team Stream on your iPhone, iPad, or Android device right now. So a huge call against Greg Marshall and the Shockers. Third against Hall. A star front court player. And as both teams go to their benches. Well, how about this number? Is the looks like the. Uh, Arena crew here looks like there's some blood on the floor. They have to get that cleaned up. 13 of Gonzaga's 25 rebounds, Doug, have been on the offensive glass. Well, a tremendous job by Kelly Olynyk. He gets inside position and just seals off Carl Hall. There is no foul. I'm sorry. Olynyk will have one more free throw. But we touched on it earlier. You know, it's been nine weeks since Gonzaga has lost the game at Thriller against Butler. 63 days and they haven't really been challenged so this is kind of a, a different they, they were challenged moment that they are in San Diego a two-point game and just down the road at BYU senior night Brandon Davies tremendous ball game so those are the only two times they really challenged late but you're right for the most part it's been a dominant season but the Butler game was a little bit like this one Gonzaga all season long in 34 games, trailed at halftime only twice. 32-2. First time ever over 30 wins in their program history. And now these Zags fans out of their seats with him too. Foul against Hart. Couple of defensive starts there to Kale Cotton for Wichita State. Mike Hart, the senior, former walk-on, second on Hart. 
Wichita State needs a bucket in a bad way. A clean look, a drive to the basket, work to get a good shot. Their leading scorer, Clay Anthony Early, still on the bench after he was pulled by Marshall early in the half. Armstead calling for a screen, finally gets it. Oh, such confidence from Armstead. Six points. Gives the Shockers some breathing room by four. Armstead, who walked onto the program last year, redshirted, paid his own way. And the transfer from Oregon. Incredible story. Olytic is fouled on the pass. We're just under 17 minutes remaining. He loves to get to the strong left hand, Malcolm Armstead, 23 years old. Comes back, little floater game. That is his game, that is his office. I think Pangos have a ball screen in his trouble, boy. Pangos just two of eight shooting. Here's Harris, nine points on the night. Able to draw contact again. He's been much more aggressive in this game compared to Thursday night, looking for his own score. And more free throws for Gonzaga. I tell you, tightly officiated. Von Baker gets caught in the cookie jar. Zag's going to live at the free throw line. That is the fifth foul against Wichita State, and we have barely played three minutes. Well, officials, what they do is they huddle up in the locker room after the half and they discuss things. It's a very physical first half. And so you have to know that that first four minutes stand, stands there, they're going to make, make a point. We're calling the little stuff. Clean it up. Here we go. What a play. Hart out. Takes it back. And somehow Lenny couldn't put it down. He struggled at the rim in both games. Armstead crossing over Hart. Battle for the rebound taken by Gonzaga. This is Dwayne Guinness in for the first time. And Pangos resets 20 to shoot. Confidence by Mark View to play Dwayne Guinness and didn't play the other night. What a box out. Um, there are coaches watching, high school coaches, college coaches, just said, wow, Ron Baker, what a box out. Baker! <laughs> and Lennox barreling to the rim. How about that versatility? Olenek lost the sneaker on the play as Gonzaga draws to within one. Malcolm Armstead, go. He only has one shoe. Go, go right at him. I don't think they realize no, it. No, they realize that they don't have to stop until the Zags get the ball. Here comes Cotton. Into the corner. White attacking offensive foul. <laughs> Kelly O'Linick, seven feet, avoiding the charge, flipping it up and in. Zags. Down one. My alma mater, handily, and then thump St. Louis. Pac-12 saying we Rodney Dangerfield, we got no re, no respect. Well, there have been some major surprises already, just a couple of days in the tournament. Already a two seed going down, Georgetown. Beaten by Florida Gulf Coast yesterday. Handily going down. And now once again, the one seed in the West, Gonzaga, on the ropes. Although they have cut it down to one. Then goes how poked away, gets it back. Suffocating defense. Van Fleet, contact, and he's headed to the free throw line. I think Kevin Pangos got fouled, but the reason it wasn't called was because Ron Baker pulled his hands away, and so the officials didn't think there was any contact as, boy, the shockers. 
so physical, so aggressive. And how about the move from Greg Marshall? Out of a timeout, Gary Bell hurts his ankle, so he doesn't have his normal two guard, and they go to a three-quarter court trap and trap him right in the corner. Gary Bell hurting the ankle is what just alluded to. They have retaped it, his return in question at this point. Again, a reminder over on CBS, under a minute to play, 3-6 matchup, Butler and Marquette tied at 69. A 1-1-3 matchup zone from Wichita State. Teams rarely zone the Zags because of respect for their passing and their shooting. Dwayne Guinness, a little used forward. Certainly of late, getting some very important minutes here. Kelly Olenek outstanding in the mid and high post against the zone. Pangos, Ten points for Pangos. Wichita State's lead down to one. Early. Greg Marshall looking very displeased on the sideline. Olenek. Well played by Arupe. him on the gun at practice. He never misses. Kevin Pang goes to Mike Hart, the former walk-on, putting the Zags up to. Hero from Thursday night doing it again. And remember, that's a rematch of a game played in Maui, which that's Rodney right. Clark hit a 40-footer to win it. So something about the non-conference part of the slate told us that those two teams were almost evenly matched. Sure enough, at the end of the season, evenly matched again. What a battle. Play up pretty early, back in for the Shockers. Wichita State, if you just join us up there, as many as 13 points right now, down two. Gonzaga slowly taking the momentum back as we come up on 13 minutes left. Shot clock at five. Aaron Pass, Williams off the hands of Early. And another Wichita State turnover, their 11th. And Greg Marshall keeps subbing guys in and out. And I think some of his guys have lost rhythm because of it. Whereas Gonzaga has gotten two good looks in a row. Pangos in the corner after running offense. And Mike Hart, how about Mike Hart? 34 shots the entire year. 23s the entire year. He's got two huge ones for the Zags. Everyone on this team calls Hart the heart and soul of the team. Career high 12 rebounds in the game. Here's Pangos pick and roll. A winner. Four points Zags lead. Again over on CBS, 13 seconds left. Marquette, two point lead over Butler. Here in Salt Lake City, you see the run by Gonzaga, eight straight points. And who steps up for leadership here for Wichita State, clearly in need of offense? I think you go inside to Carl Hall. Markelo Olenek is so big, he can play behind him. Carl Hall still finds ways to get buckets. Armstead. And it belongs to Gonzaga. of Gonzaga, something that makes this team so deadly. Kelly Olenek passing the ball, ping, ping, passing. Open man gets it, and this is a clinic in ball screen basketball. Open the ball, ball. Open man gets it, and he gets it on time and in rhythm. That's coaching. A critical call that puts Wichita State now with its seventh team foul, so one and one now for Gonzaga. With still plenty of time remaining, 12.24 left. There's a lot of time remaining, but you know, if you're Wichita State, you're falling out of the game. You've got to get your best lineup on the floor. Well, from executive producer Donnie Wahlberg, an unfiltered look into the lives of Boston's finest. New Wednesday, 9-8 Central, right here on TNT. 
Canada's finest. Kelly Olenek and Devin Mangos. And Mark Hughes' assistant, Tommy Lloyd, has become their international guru. Bringing all these youngsters into the program. Side by side with Few trying to get Gonzaga into the Sweet 16 for the fifth time since Few took over. Ten straight points for the Bulldogs. And how about the free throw disparity? Just three attempts for Wichita State. Now Linick got his hands on it. Still 16 to shoot. against Harris, and his pocket picked by Pingos. To the rim, and a goaltender. <laughs> number one in the West. He's trying to dispatch of Wichita State, coached by Greg Marshall. Ninth seed in the region. Fresh off their lopsided win over Pitt here Thursday. Wichita State, if you've just joined us, up by as many has 13 points, but just five points for the Shockers so far here in the second half. A final on CBS, Marquette over Butler to send the Golden Eagles to the Sweet 16. Baker with an enormous three. Eight points for the redshirt freshman. Playing in front of his family here in Salt Lake City. Shoot. Olenek, what a play! Oh Harris swallowed up by Anthony. Baker. <laughs> Offensive rebound. Hall is blocked and fouled. So out of the timeout, Wichita State. It's a much needed offense. They'll shoot too. Yeah, this is called horns, double high ball screen. And as the roll comes, that creates just a little bit of help. And because the help comes, you don't have to help. You got weak side help. Ron Baker, a state champion in Kansas two years ago. His parents paid his own way so that he could attend Wichita State. And Greg Marshall just couldn't say enough positive things about both of those two young men, Armstead and Baker, both paying their way through to walk on. Now, of course, both scholarship players. And here they are now trying to get this Wichita State team to the Sweet 16. David Stockton back in, handles the point here for Mark Few. Also, Drew Barnes has come in. A junior from Memphis. You gotta identify the non shooters. Stockton is a reluctant shooter. Pedro the seal. 12th. Gonzaga turnover. Dangerous pass by Armstead, deflected by Harris and taken by Stockton. the midway mark in the second half. Gonzaga holding in a four-point lead. Hang goes down Broadway. Olenek gets it back and sticks it back. Twenty-three points for Olenek. Early. Monster three. 11 points for Clee Anthony Early. They leave Bomb open, and he gets the three back. Six point Gonzaga lead. Carl Hall absorbing contact, lost the goggles, and draws contact. We're in Salt Lake City, Spiro Didis, Doug Gottlieb, Jamie Maggio, our entire crew. Gonzaga, the one seed in the West. 
Down by as many as 13 points to the ninth seeded Shockers from Wichita State. This confident team coached by Greg Marshall. They have pushed Mark Few's team right to the limit here. There's now the training staff for Wichita State tending to a cut on the bridge of Hall's nose. How about Drew Barham? And Mark Few told us we want to play him because people help off of Mike Hart. Hart's hit two threes. Barham, the Memphis transfer, just jumps up and knocks down a three. And then goes three goggles. We're completely unafraid. In, if you want to win a national championship, you got to win six games. And there are going to be times in which one of your best players, a couple of your best players, aren't playing well. And I think the Olympics playing fantastic in the second half. They've had unlikely guys step up. And we told you about Hall's story the other night. A young man diagnosed in 2007 with a heart condition that causes him to have these very scary fainting spells. Doctors told him he would never play basketball again. He didn't play for two years. And then medication that he was on started to improve his condition. Eventually worked his way back. Came back as a Juco player. And then Greg Marshall picked up the phone. They brought him in. And now their star front court player. With free throw there to cut it to five. 9-16 Romano. Yeah, he, cut, he quit his Juco. And his Juco coach heard he was playing in the church league. Called him up and said, we need to come back out to the team. Amazing. The bottom up Stockton. And Mark Few calling a timeout, yelling for the attention of the officials here in Salt Lake City. Gonzaga by five with a Sweet 16 berth on the line. You've already seen some of the upsets around the country. Gonzaga on the ropes early on. Down by as many as 13 points. Can they hold off this Wichita State team that has played with such confidence? Turn on that one. Again, if you've just joined us, Gary Bell, the star defensive player for Gonzaga, turning an ankle earlier, has yet to return. As a whistle blown inside, a jump and possession favoring Gonzaga. Tremendous play by Barr. The anticipation skills, and you don't want him coming off Baker, but you're going to guess, you better be right. You get a free possession. Linux across the floor for Baum to the rim, swatted by Arupe. Early over Olenek and a foul against Dower here. Again, Ahime Arupe not going to bowl anyone over with his offensive production, but this is what they have him for. A second in the Missouri Valley Conference in blocks. It translates roughly into, get that out of here. One in one situation. Each side with 17 fouls. 8-16 to play. Orupe, just a 40% free throw shooter. He's only taken 35 all season. And Wichita State, Doug, has barely gotten to the line tonight. Greg Marshall makes a change. Demetrik Williams comes in. Baker sits. Harris clears. Two empty possessions for Wichita State. There's the turnover on the jump ball when Rupe gets tied up, and then a miss front end of a one-on-one. Stockton around the screen from a leg. by Williams. All right, Greg, so Buzz Williams' team that close call Thursday, they are through. And they now wait the winner of Illinois and Miami Thursday night in Washington. Of course, Illinois went into the kennel and got one of the road wins of the year. Illinois beat Butler, beat Indiana at home, and beat the Zags. Brandon Paul was phenomenal way back when for the Illini. One and one for Kelly Olenek. Doug, how does Wichita State take the momentum back? They got to stop that. That's the first thing. 
Every reach is being called. We're in the double bonus. Gonzaga's living at the line. Secondly, got to get Malcolm Armstead going off some of these ball screens. This is early, their leading scorer. To the rim, extending going glass. Clay Anthony Early has an offensive mentality. He's going to score, try and score every time he gets it. And he likes having Kelly Olynyk out on the floor. Early, another New York product. In his junior season out of Middletown, New York, has 13 points. I guarantee he shoots next time he gets it. Again, Gonzaga is so patient. They go to Harris inside. What a defensive play by Hall. Shot clock did not reset. Pangos. Mike Hart, wow. Mike Hart, a career high off the glass tonight. 13th rebound. When Mark Few calls a guy irreplaceable, who averages 1.9 points a game, that's why he understands what winning basketball is about. You just saw that graphic. That could be the story of the game. The difference, 17 offensive rebounds by Gonzaga. Oh, they leave Pangos for the three. He has done it all of season long. Come up on six minutes left. Cotton gets the three pin for the Shockers. This team is all attitude, all heart. The at large bid out of the Missouri Valley Conference, 27 wins. Number four in white. Don't leave that guy in his own. Shot clock at 10. Harris, great position. Five to shoot. Pangos, again. That was all Elias Harris's unselfishness and Kelly Olynyk setting a screen. Mark Few told us yesterday Kevin Pangos was born for the big moment. Early for the three. Answers for Wichita State. Are you kidding? 16 for Anthony. Gonzaga's lead down to four with under five minutes left. We gotta get out of the zone. Start guarding Pango. Kevin Pangos is gonna end up with the ball off a of ball screen. Armstead defending him off the ball, five to shoot. A screen by oh, Linux. No! A lot of contact, no call. There's a foul. Early nearly left his feet to Baker. And he sticks the three. and Wichita State within one. Our game summary, 4-14 to play. A trip to the Sweet 16, hanging in the balance. Gonzaga's lead down to one. Wichita State has hit its last three shots, all from long distance. The two sweetest sounds you'll hear in the world, your kids saying daddy when you walk in the door, and string music in the NCAA tournament. Whap, whap, whap. Unbelievable shooting from both sides. There is Baker. The Scott City, Kansas native, discovered by Greg Marshall's assistants on a recruiting trip about a four hour drive from Wichita. Biggest shot in that young man's brief collegiate career to cut it to one. Here's Pangos. They trap him on the perimeter. Shot clock at five. Olenek. Bottled up by Early. 
It's tipped, and Armstead has it. Wichita State can retake the lead right here. to seven minutes. Now, somebody's gonna have to perform a Heimlich maneuver. They've swallowed him. And the, the players have responded in kind by making big play after big play. If you've just joined us, Wichita State led by 13 points in the first half. We're up five at half time before Gonzaga took over early in the second half. Bulldogs led by as many as eight. But Wichita State on an 11-3 run before that free throw as they have hit five straight shots, and we are all tied with 3.17 left. Elias Harris. A German national steps up, hits two. You see the Gonzaga fans behind the Bulldogs bench imploring their team to cross the finish line. Contact on the perimeter, charged to Mike Hart. Both teams are over that seven foul limit. So this will be a one and one for Baker. Baker, a 69% free throw shooter, rarely gets to the line. Has only taken 16 free throws all season long. Well, he missed 21 games with injury. And his parents traveled to every home game, driving four and a half, five hours in a purple van. There they are. That van parked outside the building here. He said, Purple Van, you had to did you grow up a K-State fan? He's like, nah, KU fan. K-State didn't didn't recruit me. State champion, his dad's a strength coach at Dot City High School. Told us yesterday his town has his two stoplights, population 2800. And he is making them oh. proud tonight. A violation against Gonzaga. Monumental mistake with 310 left. Last year, St. Mary's at the end of the Purdue game in the second round, a lane violation in David Stockton, where his dad's a legend. His dad is numbers hanging up in the rafters. That wasn't his fault. Officials are conferencing here. It's a tough moment. For a father looking on here, David Stockton, living here in Salt Lake City with his dad until the age of 10 when Stockton retired, moving the family back to Spokane. The officials now will go to the replay monitor. Clee Anthony Early, we're told, went into the game prematurely here, so they try to sort through this confusion. What, what happened is, the, because it was a violation, no time went off the clock, so Early can't enter the basketball game. It will be Wichita State basketball. Early will be permitted into the game. 3.09 to play. Wichita State clinging to a one point lead. One of the things Gonzaga does best, they always put a big man on out of bounds plays. It's really hard to run an underneath out of bounds play. Gonzaga, the number one seed in the West. Number one in the final AP poll on the ropes here in Salt Lake City. Baker. Got it again. Ron Baker introducing himself to the nation here. Here comes Olenek. Sidestepping the defender. Offensive rebound, Harris. Payne goes for the three. Offensive 
offensive rebounding tonight. One of the major storylines for Gonzaga. Stocks it. Olenek. Wide open look. Two point game. Wichita State has to send five to rebound. They got to put a body on. They are getting crushed on the offensive boards. 19 offensive rebounds. Wichita State at this end has hit six straight from downtown. Baker's hit his last two. Armstead likes to go left and shoot floaters when he can. The shot clock's going down. Four to shoot. Van Fleet a freshman. Long three. And he buries it. with 73 seconds left. You cannot stop playing if you're Wichita State. Fred Van Fleet, who had hit only 13 threes all season, makes it a five-point game. Wichita State a minute away from the Sweet 16. Austin to Hall. Officials say jump possession arrow favoring Wichita State. I believe the shot clock should have reset as Hall missed the layup, but it did hit the bottom side of the backboard. And now the officials will go to the replay monitor. Brian Dorsey signaling. This is just a shot clock operator error. That ball hits the rim. It should reset. It will be Wichita State ball underneath with a fresh 35. You have to think they'll get this look, sorted look through quickly. Effort. Look at the effort of Mike Hart and Clee Anthony Early. I mean, for Hart to even tie it up. That's a, that's a pretty easy call. The Gonzaga Bulldogs, 15 straight wins, have not lost in nine weeks. Now remember, Gonzaga started a trend in college basketball. Regardless of who's taking it out, they like a big guy with length on the ball, underneath, out of bounds. It's very difficult. Last time Wichita State took it in, they had to throw it all the way to the backcourt. That's dangerous when Gonzaga knows what's coming. If you're Greg Marsh right now, you need to tell your players unequivocally, here's what we're running. Go get the ball. Here's how many timeouts we have. We have three. If you're in trouble, quick timeout. Our officiating crew tonight, John Higgins, Brian Dorsey, and John Gaffney. Let me say this. I disagree with several of the close calls late in the first half and the second half. But late in this game, as good officials are prone to do, They've let the players decide the game, and ones that are close, they haven't called a thing. Doug, it clearly touched the rim. What are they still discussing They're trying at this to discuss point? the difference in the time. Remember, it touches the rim. Right. Okay? It's obvious to jump ball, and Wichita State had the jump ball. Well, certainly the biggest call of this game. They'll go back to the replay monitor trying to get it right. Watch Clay Anthony Early's foot when he just narrowly looks like he avoids being out of bounds. Well, how about Carl Hall? I know he was off balance a little bit, but that's a layup that could have given Wichita State a seven point lead. And now you want to you want your best free throw shooters to demand the basketball. Demand the basketball. You cannot be denied getting the ball in bounds. If you're Greg Marshall. In, instead of instead of deciding if it's your ball just assume it's your ball. Officials were told now trying to determine when the whistle was actually blown. There you see the signal for the jump. Amazing. Gonzaga had complete control and we're playing well. And Wichita State just would not go away. Gonzaga had an eight point lead earlier in the second half. Wichita State long offensive drought. 
Oh, so they it, made their run and now lead by five. So if Early had the ball, it should be 44-2, I believe. There and that go. is what they have set it at. So 44.2 to play. <laughs> Eight team fouls against Gonzaga, Wichita State with nine. And these Zags fans right now sitting on their hands. And finally make the announcement after a lengthy delay. Wichita State trying to get through to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 2006. Well, you foul immediately, right? Wow. Dangerous pass. Absolutely. They haven't fouled yet. They get to Van Fleet. A 65% free throw shooter, but the freshman clearly didn't show nerves a moment ago. The biggest shot of his young career, that long three. And right now can give the Shockers a seven-point lead. This will be a one-and-one. With 38.6 remaining. What an unbelievable tournament this has been. Just a couple of days in, we saw a two seed go down yesterday, Georgetown. And now Gonzaga in serious trouble. Well, Malcolm Armstead, you have to demand to your team that they pick up. That you wall off, that you make Gonzaga take a contested shot, and then you everybody rebounds and hold on to the ball. Seven point game. I would not let Kevin Pangos touch the ball. Just don't let him get it. Here comes Stockton. It's a high screen, goes right to the rim. Very little time elapsing. 33.5 to play. Wichita State can taste it. But when you go get it, you get it and you grab it. You don't do what Davidson did and play like hot potato. Go get the basketball. Quick whistle that gets a haul. Haul at 69% free throw shooter. And it is a two shot situation for the senior. What an emotional year it's been for him. Missing seven games. Going down with a thumb injury. He came back after seven games of breaking his thumb. I mean, you want to be a toughness? Two for four tonight. 32.5 remaining. And these are the moments at the free throw line where those season numbers are meaningless. This is the kind of pressure that few players experience. Two huge misses. The door still open for Gonzaga. Olenek. 20 seconds. Pangos. Barham had it. And a pushing foul. 16.1. Two free throws for Drew Barham. And Gonzaga can inch closer to within three. Offensive rebounds have been the story, and Cotton just going a little too hard. So here is Drew Barham, the junior, Memphis native. First season with Gonzaga, sat out last year. Misses the first. Barham just 14 free throws on the season before that attempt. Remember, Gary Bell hasn't played much in the second half, sprained his ankle early, hasn't returned. Barham with a big three and has been part of this offensive rebounding juggernaut for the Zags. Drew Barn comes up empty, and Wichita State 15 seconds away from a monster upset. And Malcolm Armstead has a chance to come close to sealing the deal. 
He paid his own way in transferring from Oregon to Wichita State. They didn't have a scholarship. So he worked at a car dealership. He delivered cars. He moved cars. Some were nice. Some were nasty. Some didn't have air conditioning. 23 years old. The Alabama native. Six point game. There is Greg Marshall. Didn't know what to expect from this team. Losing four starters from a year ago. Talked about it being a transitional year for the program. Suffice it to say, they have overachieved seconds away from the Sweet 16. Pangos. Contact. Well, the last thing that the Shockers want here is to put them at the free throw line. Chance to cut into the deficit with the clock stopped. It's on Baker. Kevin Pangos told us about all the great ball players coming out of the GTA, the greater Toronto area. Yeah, he threw that GTA reference on you. I mean, you were stunned. You, you just ate it up. Huh? Well, I mean, you think about <laughs> Toronto basketball, and he has been so clutch. Well, Pangos and company just can't hit these free throws. Bomb coming up empty a moment ago. Gonzaga again has not lost in nine weeks, 63 days since that defeat at Hinkle Fieldhouse against Butler. Fifteen straight wins in what has been the most successful year in terms of victories in history. Trying Guinness comes in, a redshirt freshman. Go get the ball. Baker, Armstead, go get the ball. Van Fleet fouled by Hart. 11.2 to play as the Zags trying to extend this as far as they can. There is, you talked about the guts, the moxie of Wichita State. There's a lot of Valley pride on the line. I know Creighton's won their game, but Creighton's leaving the league, leaving, leaving the league. But Southern Illinois looks like it's on its way back. Northern Iowa, always competitive. So Greg Marshall told us about how Wichita State is trying to emulate what this Gonzaga program has been over the years. Free throw by Van Fleet. Makes it a three possession game. Said so that Gonzaga is the gold standard. Yep. Nothing and a chance here to knock him off. Incredibly respectful comments about what Mark View has done. They wanted to compete, but they wanted to compete with the best. They feel like Gonzaga is the best. What a night for this youngster, Fred Van Fleet, the freshman. It's an eight point game. Here comes Stockton to the rim, 6.3. Mark View will call for time. Six-point game, 6.3 remaining. And for people turning on their TVs and checking in for the first time, a huge upset is nearly complete. And you want to talk about three games in one. Wichita State dominating early, up 13. A seven point swing on one possession for Gonzaga late in the first half. And though Wichita State had a 36 31 lead, it was on a last second tip in. You still felt like they were barely in the lead. Gonzaga takes an eight point lead in the second half. Wichita State's in foul trouble in disarray. And then they go on a three point shooting barrage, get just enough stops despite 17 offensive rebounds from Gonzaga. And they are 6.3 seconds away from literally shocking the country. Oh, and this one is over. Cal Syracuse right now, early second half. 11 point lead for the Orange. 6.3 to play, the inbounds to Van Fleet. It's stolen, Pangos on a three. And now, yep. will do it. Wichita State knocks off the number one team in the country. And the Shockers dancing to the Sweet 16. Wow, you close the game on a 16 to seven run. You stare number one down and you beat them with three point shots, with a couple of defensive stops, with grit and determination. What a win for the Shockers.